They've undergone a regime change at USC. Steve Sarkeesian in. Can he take the Trojans and take them back to the national championship game? I'm Pete Futek. We are breaking down the 2014 USC Trojans. Here's what you need to know to be an expert. Oh, you're a clever one. Faster, faster, faster. The key to the offense this season is they're going to up the tempo in a big time way. They're not going to go at warp speed, but they are going to speed it up just enough. They're going to try to keep defenses on their toes. They're not going to sit back, relax. They're going to keep things moving. Can Cody Kessler be the guy to make sure that this offense flies? He took over the quarterback job this spring, ended all controversies right there. But can the defense now keep up the pace? If they're going three and out early, which was a problem last year, third down conversions was a big issue for the Trojans. Can this defensive line hold up? It is a big, talented group, but it's girthy. Leonard Williams is an NFL talent. They got lots of other big bodies around him, but they're going to have to be able to keep up the pace. All right, Doug Chapman, who's the player you're watching out for? Pete, you talk about that defensive line, but my surprise player is going to be one of the guys covering on the back end. Cornerback slash athlete, Adoree Jackson. Kid has not even gotten on campus yet, but he will be an impact player as soon as he gets there. Part of the reason he chose USC is because we're going to let him go both ways, play cornerback and also play wide receiver, a little bit of slot back. He idolized Reggie Bush, wanted to wear number five. He wants to be that type of player, and I believe he can. My surprise player is Adoree Jackson. Let's take a look at their schedule. For everyone who really enjoyed watching the Royal Purple Las Vegas Bowl last year, you get a repeat to start the season. Fresno State comes to LA to play USC to kick things off, and then it's the toughest game that USC is going to have to face all year in Pac-12 play, most likely, when they go to Stanford. Fortunately, they miss Oregon from the north, and the rest of the schedule isn't that bad in the middle, especially in Pac-12 play. They get Oregon State at home, they get Arizona State at home, Colorado at home. That's not all that bad. The key is going to be getting through that midsection, because at the very end, at UCLA and against Notre Dame. It starts off interesting early, gets tough late, in the middle not too bad. All right, Doug, what do you have them going? Choose wisely. Pete, could USC be back? They could go 11-1 and one this season. After they get through that Stanford game, the schedule gets pretty easy, but towards the end of the year, I see them slipping up, and that slip-up's gonna come against Notre Dame. But don't be surprised if the Trojans go 11-1 and one this year. Can go 11-1, won't go 11-1. Here's the problem. They still have depth issues. They're still still trying to get out from these NCAA sanctions. They're still building up the depth. Can seven wins Sark be an 11-1 head coach? I'm not quite sold on this. I think they lose two, maybe three games. I don't think they win the Pac-12 South. But we're breaking it all down. We're looking at every top team here on CampusInsiders.com.